Good morning, Pudesha. Good morning. How are you today? Good. Very good. Excellent. Okay. Yes, got it. That, that is fine. All right. So whilst we're waiting for a projector to, to okay. So while we're waiting for the material to be projected, I just want to find out from you, individual, to tell me this. As a matter of fact. Personally, I don't like lecturing or listening to lecture. So I'm going to convert my session to an interaction session where all of you are going to get involved in the interaction. Is that okay? Right. So tell me the three most important things in your life. I want someone to tell me what are the three most important things in your life? In order of priority. That's that for us. What, what is the three most important things in your life? Madam suffering from the crisis. Yes, go ahead. Tell me the three most important things in your life. Family. Family. Good. And what? Being successful. Success. And the third one? Health. Health. Very good. Let's let's give a round of applause. Yes, we can we can speak loud and I'll be fine. Yes, go ahead. Health. Health. Avoid trouble. Say again. Avoid trouble. My problem. Okay, you want to avoid problems. And then and money. Money. All right. So money the change. All right. So this simply tells us that all of us are priorities in life. To some people, their family is a priority. To some others, it is just the money. Nothing else but the money, then it. So you want to do everything possible to secure things that are most important to you. Now, if you look at my theme, leveraging on insurance to achieve financial security and independence. I was trying to really digest the, the theme that was sent to me. How do we leverage insurance to achieve financial Security. How, how do we do that? And that is something that we want to discuss together. All right. We cannot actually deep dive into it without considering the definition or the meaning of insurance. So at this point, I want one of you to tell us or to tell me what he understands by the term or the expression insurance. What is it? What is insurance? Who can tell us? Who can define insurance for us, please? You want to try? Okay. Try for us. You're not ready. Okay, try. So, who can try for us? Who can find insurance for us? Yes. Alright, yes, go ahead. Prior to the care of the incidents. 
So insurance does not actually enrich people. Insurance only reinstates you in your actual situation which you were prior to the occurrence of the eventuality or the disaster. Okay. So the next thing that I want to talk about has to do with how insurance works. How does insurance work? I remember not too long ago, it was to someone asked whether insurance is the same as gambling. And the reason why he asked that question is that you know somebody who pays insurance for just one year and the person benefited over 50,000 Ghana cities. And guess how much the person was paying monthly? Less than 100 Ghana cities. Yes, and he got over 50,000 Ghana cities upon the demise of his father. So he asked whether insurance is really a gambling. But please, is insurance really a gambling? No, insurance is not a gambling. Insurance is a risk pool. We actually pool a risk of funds into a common pool. And in determining who goes into that pool, we classify individuals based on their measure or level of exposure to risk. And we box them into the same pool. So we spread the cost of the impact on an individual should there be any eventuality or should there be any eventuality. All right. So when you talk about insurance, other synonyms you can use are security, protection, coverage, safeguarding, hedging, mitigation, reinstatement, I mean measure of reinstatement, and then identification and then safety net. Next. There is one fact in life, and there is an undeniable fact. And it's premised on one what one Greek philosopher by name Socrates stated. He said this. He says, we can't prevent the unexpected from happening, but sometimes we can protect ourselves and our families from the worst of the financial fallout. True or false? That is very true. There are many things in life that are inevitable, we don't have absolute control over. For example, accidents on the road. I don't have control over it. Absolutely not. The demise of someone's parents or your dear loved one is something we don't have control of it. So it is inevitable. When this comes, you can't prevent it. However, the impact of the occurrence of this can be hedged or mitigated, or it can be reduced to a larger extent. And that is what insurance really seems to do. So when you talk about insurance processes, please always keep in mind these three steps. It is very, very important. One has to do with risk pooling. That's the first step. The second has to do with premium contribution. And then the third has to do with risk sharing. So basically, that is what the insurance process or steps involve in insuring oneself. So the risk pooling, like I said, we consider individual based on their safe cohorts or their level of exposure to risk. And then we box them for them to pay the same premium at a predetermined uh, amount we pay should there be any eventuality. The next one has to do with contribution of premiums, and that is very important. Anyone who owes insurance or is a policy holder must continue to pay his premium. And this is one avenue that really stirs a lot of controversy between insurers and insurer. There are some people who will not be paying their premiums, but should there be any eventuality, they rush to the insurer to secure a claim, isn't it? That is where, when you go, the insurers will repudiate your claim because you have not paid persistently or consistently. You get it? Uh -huh. So in order for you to benefit from insurance, there is a need for you to consistently pay the premiums to benefit the employees. And then we are saying that the risk is also shared among a pool of people. Now remember the illustration I gave earlier on. Somebody who was paying less than 100 dollars in this, but when he lost the father, he paid 50,000 dollars in this. His actual contribution is even less than that. Last year, you can Google and see, we paid a woman 1 million Ghana cities on a claim. Just think about it. The person's contribution comes nowhere near it. So the question comes, where, where from the money that we used to pay this woman? It is within the risk pool of identity. And because of the eventuality that has been paid to reduce the financial burden, the death of the loved one was going to impose on the person. So this is basically the three points. So first, policy purchase, we have what we call the premium payment. Then should there be any occurrence of a risk, such as death or accident, 
we pay the premium. If it is debt, anybody who has a policy has what we call a beneficiary who has been designated. So he stands in place of you to file for a claim, and that claim is paid to your beneficiary. Unless, of course, you are alive and maybe you have suffered total permanent disability where you can be the claim yourself, then claim payment also comes in. There's one thing that we don't want to lose sight of when buying insurance. In buying insurance, there are three key things you need to do. One has to do with the fact that you need to have an insurable interest in the person you are buying the policy for. And when you talk about insurable interest, it is simply your interest, or let me say financial interest you have in the subject matter of the insurance towards the welfare of the subject matter. For example, I buy insurance policy to protect myself. I have the liberty to add someone else onto the policy. Maybe my mother or my father or my wife. Now these are people who legally and even customarily I have obligation towards within it in caring for them. So I have an insurable interest because I have an obligation towards the welfare of these ones. Can I include someone like my neighbor as part of my insurance policy? Can I? No. Why, why, why is it that I cannot add my girlfriend or a neighbor onto my policy? Why? Yes. Go ahead. There is no insurable because if the person passes away, you, you will not be the person that is responsible to take care of by the funeral and those stuff. So unless, let's say, before you insure someone, something, a property or anything, you must have an insurable interest. Very good. You cannot do that, isn't it? Don't you think it is so easy for someone to insure his girlfriend for one billion Ghana city? And then they can go and kill the girlfriend to come for one billion Ghana city. It is so easy, isn't it? When that happens, do you know what, 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 what comes about? In insurance, we call something adverse selection, or we call it moral hazard. We only open the floodgate for moral hazards, okay? Where people go and insure people who are just about to die, and then tomorrow, the following day, we just come and make a claim. So in insurance, we keep guiding the risk pool of fund. You get it? We police it. So it goes through what we call underwriting. We measure the level of risk the person is introducing to the pool to determine whether, first of all, the person qualifies to be in the system or in the pool or not. And if indeed he qualifies, at what rates are the person paid? Because in insurance, the higher your risk, the higher your premium, isn't it? Yes. So when you look at our funeral policy, for example, those who are far advanced in age, they pay more premium than those who are younger. The reason is that they are more likely to die first, isn't it? <laughs> even though they think they're happy, younger ones can even that. But naturally, that is what is expected. All right, next. Yeah, so one key thing we need to keep, uh, keep in mind has to do with these three things that we have mentioned. As a matter of fact, there are a plethora of life insurance policies in the industry today. But because of time and because of this session, for the sake of this, I just want to limit ourselves to only these five types of insurances we have on the market. The first I'll talk about is life insurance policy. What is a life insurance policy? Life insurance policy guarantees that the insurer pays a sum of money to your beneficiaries. So, for example, I sign onto the policy and then, let's say I pass away, I don't pay the same, okay? When I pass away, I have nominated beneficiaries to stand in my place as it were to make a claim. That money is paid to my beneficiaries, and that is what life policy is about. If it is a dependent, I added onto the policy. Upon their demise, I have the opportunity to go out to file for a claim, and that amount of money is paid to me who is the beneficiary. The second policy I'll talk about is the health insurance. Uh, I know today most of you have the Ghana Health Insurance, but there are not private health insurance to do this, and we have more complex ones too. Now I'm going to delve into the ones we have currently in most insurance companies. Now this health insurance protects you from catastrophic bills in case of serious accidents or illness. I don't know how much it costs when you want to treat a disease like cancer in Ghana. I don't know how much it costs. I don't know how much it costs to treat a person who is going through uh, treatment of a disease such as Alzheimer's or stroke. 
or kidney failure, or going through a total permanent disability. I don't know how much it costs. But anyone who has a policy on this, the insurance caters for this in terms of what eventuality. Interestingly, some insurance even have, or some insurers even have what we call hospitalization benefits. Where upon you being hospitalized, we pay to the tune of 200 and cities a day. And for the number of days that you are hospitalized, the insurance will be paid for you. So quite apart from you enjoying from the amount of money that is going to be paid to you for your sickness, there's also this hospitalization where we pay this amount of money to you. Some even has as much as 90 days within a year. The reason being that, you see, we said earlier on that insurance provides for a safety net, isn't it, to an individual upon the event of an eventuality. Let's assume this woman who sells at the Makola market. Any day he doesn't go to work to sell tomatoes, is he going to have any income? By no means. Supposing this woman is hospitalized for, let's say, 20 working days, what it means is that he's going to make losses because he's, he hasn't, she hasn't been to the market, isn't it? So what the health insurance hospitalization component the price is that? Now, this person has to prove, prove, bring the proof of evidence that he has been hospitalized. For the number of days that the person has been at the hospital, the insurance company pays 200 dollars cities or even above some insurance companies here to this person who has been hospitalized. Hasn't this brought about a relief to the person? Yes, so that is what insurance is about. Currently, we have another aspect of the hospital insurance known as the tele-doctor consultation or the telemedicine. Where this time around, when you are sick, when you're on a policy, you are assigned a medical doctor who you are going to contact 24 7 at any point in time. How long does it take you to go to the hospital and come back? What is the process of the political or the legal hospital? Please, how long? Have you quantified that? How long does it take you to go to the hospital and come back? Or when your parents say, I'm going to the hospital and come back, how long does it take them? Now think about the number of hours they are going to kill the drug from the travel distances. When you get to the hospital, the number of hours you spend in the queue to go for your fire. Then when you're going to consult, the number of hours you spend at the doctor's consulting room before going for medication and all that. This is just a waste of time, isn't it? So the aspect of this telemedicine requires that you only have to call your doctor 24-7, lodge your complaint. Now this doctor assigned to you is going to diagnose you on the phone, digitally. And then depending on the degree of the ailments, will determine whether you can make a prescription via your mobile phone for you to go for your medication. Depending on the degree of the sickness, we'll decide whether you have to go to a partner lab or we'll direct you to a partner hospital for you to be catered for. So just think about it. And compare to when a person is sick and you have to make a walk-in at a hospital. So that is what the health insurance is about. We all know about the auto insurance and then the home insurance, what it, what it does. For the auto insurance, it's pretty simple. If I buy a car, and let's say the following day someone snatches the car away from me, if I pay my insurance, the insurance company will buy a new car for me. True or false? True. That is how it works. Or if I knock someone down, or let's say if I hit somebody's vehicle, and my car gets dented, and then the other person's car also gets dented. Because I have the insurance to cover me and even the other person, the insurance company will go and fix mine and then the other person too. So that is also the benefit of it. So it is with a home insurance group. Now, the third one that I'm going to talk about is the investment policy. An example of this investment policy is the educational support policy. We have the short-term one, we have the medium-term one, and then we have the long-term one. So depending on what you want to use it for, you will decide the number of years you want to go for this policy. Even though it has a new education plan, I know some people who invested 10 years towards their wedding, and, and, and that is pretty, pretty, pretty good, isn't it? It is better to save towards your wedding than to go for a loan for a wedding and go and pay a high growth interest. Someone told me of this very interesting story, I don't know whether it's true or not, of a man who, I mean the bridegroom, 
who was having a wedding and never smiled throughout the course of the wedding session. You know why? Look at, look at this why this bride will not smile. Yes, yeah, say it now. Yes, the person has gone for a loan, isn't it? And he's thinking of how he's going to pay this loan. So there's no way the person can be happy. So instead of the person enjoying the marriage session, she actually, he actually endured throughout the session of the marriage. Okay. So it is better for us to save or invest you know, towards some of these projects we have in our kind of us. The last one, I know our pension person is going to talk about it. It's what we call annuity. Now, you can decide to pay either a lump sum today to an insurance company, or you can pay monthly to an insurance company for a period of time, let's say for 10 or 20 years, so that I am going on retirement, that insurance company is not going to pay me an amount of money, a predetermined amount of money, till I die. In some insurance companies, they have even included health benefits, where a person, after going on pension, will be paid a health benefit till the person dies after 60 years. And we know very well that this is the period during which parents spend money a lot on medication, isn't it? After your patient, or after your patient, that is when they spend so much of money on bills because of ill health care, isn't it? Uh, they suffer from diabetes, hypertension, stroke, I mentioned them. So during this time, because you have actually secured yourself earlier on, now the insurance company now steps in to provide a protection to you. So that is the annuity. So in a nutshell, what can we say regarding the economic benefit of insurance? And let us tie this into the theme I exposed earlier on. How we can leverage upon insurance to achieve financial security and independence. Now these are the benefits. One has to do with what? Identification of a loss. Think about someone who has bought a house for let's say $400,000 and then the following day this house has been raised down to be leased by an inferno or one place of fire. Let's ask ourselves, why is the person going to get the money again to go and buy this house? That is where insurance comes into the pool, isn't it? Now think about the second one. Reduction of worry and fear, it enhances your confidence. And I really realized it is very true. You know, when I bought my car, I knew. The first year, I decided to buy a comprehensive insurance. If I, if I compare the confidence I, at which I was driving the car to presently when I have only third party, I can see a great difference. It doesn't mean I was foolhardy in driving, but it gives you some level of confidence, isn't it? Because you even know that should there be any eventuality, the insurance company will step in to indemnify you. Alright? So that is very true. The second one has to be your source of both investment funds. It provides source of investment funds, like we said. People now save towards their wedding or even to go on vacation in plan a year or two so that they can approve something at the end of the day instead of going for a loan with a factual interest. Three is that it, it, it prevents losses. It also enhances one's credit score. I think in Ghana we are not so particular about credit score. When you travel abroad, let me tell you, the more you owe, the more this is your credit worth, the more you get loans. If you don't owe, you don't get any credit facility. You need to owe. And the more you pay, the more you enhance your credit facility. You get it. There are more of it than not where people go for loan because of sicknesses and other things they cannot pay. When that happens and you cannot pay, they blacklist you, and that affects your credit score. But should there be an insurance company to indemnify you in the case of that eventuality, it enhances or keeps your credit score moving up or going, isn't it? And so that is that for the point number five. It also provides safety nets, income in terms of accident, critical illness, and total permanent disability. Today, if you have a parent who is suffering from stroke, or total permanent disability. The care of this person is considered to be a burden on the family, through a force. But if you have an insurance policy that covers the person, it brings what? The relief to the family. And that stabilizes you financially, isn't it? Good. The next is wealth inheritance for your loved ones. I made mention of a woman 
who represented 1 million Ghana cities to in our office just last year, somewhere in October. This woman's policy, this uh, woman's uh, husband has been on the policy for I think a year and some few months. If we look at the amount of money he's paying as a premium compared to what he was going to get. You pay one million dollars straight away into the person's account. I don't know how much formal cost is your locality. But let's assume he spends even twenty thousand dollars and we are paid one million dollars. What is going to happen to the rest? What is going to happen to the rest? Is that not an inheritance for this person? Of course it is. You get it. So that is that for the benefits of that. Then also, we have uh, money to fund the children's education. I made mention of education insurance policy that covers children. Extra source of income when you retire. I know it is an example. And then there is one value we don't appreciate so much about insurance. And that is the last one. Peace of mind. Peace of mind. Please, what is the value of peace of mind? What is the value of peace of mind? The value of peace of mind is so enormous. You can't even quantify it when you have peace of mind. If I know tomorrow my mom or dad is going to pass away and I'm going to, I'm going to get 100,000 Ghana cities, I'm not going to pray for them to die. Anyway, you get it. But I know should there be any eventuality like that, <laughs> that amount of money will be paid to me, isn't it? To bring about a financial relief for me. And that is how insurance works. Do you know why today when you go to post funerals, there are some people who, 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 who cry uncontrollably when they go to funerals? Uh, unstoppably, there is no way you can stop them. Who knows why? Sometimes it's not because of the demise of the person, but what? The cost. Yes, you're right. The cost that the death of a loved one is going to impose on them. Not just the funeral cost. But the family, the person have left. For example, if they have children, how are they going to cater for those children? You get it. Now, please go over to the first slide that I skipped. And let me find out from you exactly what to do if you find yourself in this situation. Yes, here. Yeah. So, look at the first problem, the first gentleman. And this is a real life situation. Okay? A real life situation. Now the first gentleman is Emmanuel, final year medical student, but he is lacking the financial capacity to pay for his last examination at the medical school. If you are in Emmanuel's shoes, exactly what would you do? Just think about it. It's a rhetorical question. Just what would you do? Final year student, because of the fact that you lack the financial capacity, you cannot register for a final exam. Now look at the second one. Mohammed's last daughter that she loved so much was diagnosed with a debilitating disease, a debilitating illness, that is leukemia, cancer of the blood. But then he lacks the capacity to organize the amount of money he requires to go through a chemotherapy. If you are in Mohammed's if you are in Muhammad's shoe, please, what will you do? Or the third one, Rukia is a single mother of five children, but she lost her job because of redundancy, and because of that. She is unable to organize three square meals or put food on the table to care for the family. If you are looking at shoe, just what will you do? Or the last one, Mr. Ayakua is still seven who have just retired, but the take home pay that they gave it to him wouldn't take him home. Assuming you have Mr. Ayakua, exactly what will you do? And these are situations that are us. you get it? But once you have an insurance, insurance will definitely not solve all problems. But like you said, it's eradicate them or reduce them to the very extent of benefit. That is why we are saying that there is a way out. You can actually use insurance, leverage upon insurance to build financial security and stability. Thank you very much for your attention.